My name is Yuan Yu. I work for Intel China. Um, I'm responsible for corporate social responsibility. Um, I've been with Intel for 26 years. Actually, um, I've been always in the business until about six years ago. Uh, I moved into the newly created role, which is really um, how to manage the strategy, and mm -hmm. shape the strategy and the actions, working mm -hmm. with multiple key stakeholders internally, externally. Mm -hmm. It was really has been really fun right last five, six years. Uh, let me share with you, when I, when I first moved into this role of corporate social responsibility, uh, the social innovation is really a new term. Mm -hmm. um, a l historically, when people talk about social response, people talk about volunteering, mm -hmm. talk, people talk about donations, right? People talk about contributions. Um, coming from business world, I was really thinking, what do we try to accomplish in the first place, right? Or what is the business role? Mm -hmm. um, um, then people realize we want to solve a met social needs. We want to address social issues. Long term, China needs to grow sustainably. Mm -hmm. Innovation really is the key because innovation is talked about how to unleash enthusiasm, innovative enterprise spirit of each every citizens, mm -hmm. right? So how to incubate that kind of the enterprise spirit? Education is really key. So mm -hmm. one of the key for India be focusing on the education. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk a little bit more. Uh, another thing we look at is really if you may know, China has grown rapidly last thirty five years but it has, it has been growing in an unsustainable way mm -hmm. uh, at the cost of the people harmony, at the cost of the pollutions. Mm -hmm. And government realized about five years ago, is really, that's not going to work, right? And, and to start looking at how to address those issues. So um, one of the issues is really obvious environment. And we try to look at it from technology company perspective, how technology can play a role, mm -hmm. right? To reduce and all these pollution or carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, and another interesting thing is really about five years ago, there was a big earthquake in Sichuan, 100,000 people died. I'm not sure we heard about it. Um, the first response is really a lot of enthusiastic volunteers came to the fore, right? And a lot of government agencies tried to figure out what's happening. So that became a trigger point. Government realized that the, the, the old way of big government is not going to address all those issues anymore. Um, Chinese because of the communist country, I mean, they have a big government, um, there's no NGO, right? The NGO is really under the government. Mm -hmm. So it was starting about five, some years, like five years ago, and the government realized that China really needs a more vibrant social sector, non-profit sectors. Mm -hmm. So from Intel perspective, we tried to look at it. We have been doing, we had been doing a lot of volunteering, we do a lot of contribution, a lot of initiative. We were thinking, oh, geez, what Intel can do mm -hmm. to help the government build a stronger social nonprofit ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being is really, you may not know, is really um, today Intel China, China is a BRICS market for Intel ahead of the US. Mm -hmm. So it was not like that 10, 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason because in the last 20 years we have working with the local industry, working with government, try to build a very vibrant ICT industry. Mm -hmm. So we, we grow together with the local industry. So I was thinking, well, as a nonprofit today, that was five years ago, was very similar like 15 years ago, mm -hmm. like the ICT industry. Mm -hmm. How we can work with them, how we work with the government to build a vibrant nonprofit sector, just like uh, the ICT industry 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that was aha. Uh -huh. So we tried to look at it. So what really happens, really um, talking in particular in Zebra, because tying with social enterprise, the topic today is really 
we start working with government, work with nonprofit, and work with foundation, try to see who would be the future leader of the sectors. So we start initiative we call it that back then social enterprise is very new. We call it the innovation initiative for nonprofit. The goal is really try to work with other partners to collectively to identify uh, the key innovative leader, the future leader of the social sector, and uh, how to help them, and how to celebrate uh, their achievements, and how to promote their practices. Mm -hmm. So that initiative last four or five years. We have built a network about one thousand leading nonprofit or social enterprise, whatever you call them, um, and connecting with policy maker, government, and, and also the and, uh, business too. Um, so that's a very interesting journey. So our goal is to summarize our, our, our corporate social media. Three things we try to do is really, um, on the social sector, how we work with other partners to build a vibrant nonprofit social sectors. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about Intel technology later. Mm -hmm. Um, second is really how we leverage the, our technology, or technology in general, to reduce the carbon footprint mm -hmm. um, or environment sustainability. And, and the, the, first, the third one I talked about earlier is the education, is really how to help the education transform. So a lot of speakers talk about education today. I mean, China is very similar to Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's role learning, right? So you do memorizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, the traditional education system was actually architected about 200 years ago. It's, it's, it's a vestige of a industrial revolution, mass production. 50 students in a classroom, mm -hmm. right? You will be trained, taught the same thing. Then you're going to do a quality control, QA, which is examinations, right? Nothing has changed over the last 200 years. Mm -hmm. So what you have been doing in, over the uh, lot of country, especially in China, is really uh, we launched about 13 years ago, we call the Teach to the Future initiative, which is basically to teach teacher how to teach. Mm -hmm. So in a classroom, the center of the classroom is not teachers, it's students. Mm -hmm. Students is a uh, teacher is a facilitator. Um, and there's also, a, we have done a lot of research with a lot of fellow travelers, we call 21st century skills. Uh, what it really means is really critical thinking, mm -hmm. lifetime, lifelong learning, mm -hmm. um, it creativity, collaboration. These are lifelong skill, which is really, really critical. Mm -hmm. So we try to help the teachers how to impart that kind of capacity skill to the students mm -hmm. around the world. And globally, we have trained about 12 million teachers. And in China, we have trained about 2.2 million teachers. It's about 15% of the teacher populations. And now we're working with government um, how to transform their policies. Um, um, now, all these things are very good. It look like traditional um, corporate social responsibilities. Now, after the earthquake, we are now asking ourselves what more we could do. And all those teacher training, all these initiatives, have we really helped address those issues fundamentally mm -hmm. or just scratch the surface? Mm -hmm. And the obvious answer is no. Um, then the question was how we should do it differently. Um, so, we realize that in order to all address all those fundamental issues, you really have to partner with other people, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, a single company, even a big company like Intel, is not big enough, right? And another thing, a high is really, if you look, look at all those social issues, it's very universal. Education, mm -hmm. every country is talking about. U.S. talking about it, U.K. talking about it, Thailand is talking about. I got a high this morning. Wow, well, sounds so familiar, mm -hmm. right? And all those social community issues, poverty, digital divide, wealth divide, it's universal. And healthcare, aging, it's universal. So how we can learn from those countries who are ahead of China, um, maybe we can learn a lot from Thailand. I mean, I, I, was, I was really pleasantly surprised. 40 years ago, Dr. Machi started a social enterprise. Mm -hmm. I never expect Thailand is so well ahead of a lot of other countries like China. Um, so. So the next step we're thinking is really Intel is a corporation now. We have a lot of program initiative, right? And we, we know a lot about issues. Being a big network, we become smarter because talking to 100 NGO become smarter than a lot of other people. We find out training um, 12 million teachers, talking to all the educators along the globe. We, we find ourselves become very smart on those social issues. Mm -hmm. Then this question is really, how we can leverage Intel's core competency. Mm -hmm. 
to be really the catalyst. So those issues is not going to address use methodology 200 years ago mm -hmm. to address 200 year old problems, right? Um, talk about educations. With technology, you can assess information anytime, anywhere, wherever mm -hmm. you want, right? Everybody's brain is wired differently, right? You have different ways of learning things and how you can take that into account so you can learn quickly mm -hmm. and wherever you are. Um, so we have initiative working with um, our internal business groups, working with the government, working with um, researchers, working in schools, how to figure out, we call educating transformations in leveraging technologies. So anytime, anywhere, um, you can learn quickly, smartly, at your own pace, not being dictated in the classroom. So that's been working around the globe, that's initiative. Obviously, if technology is being adopted, Intel will be beneficiary. And we'll change the world, we'll, we'll transform how education is being delivered. Mm -hmm. um, historically, last 200 years. Mm -hmm. um, on the environment aspect is really, again, use technology. So um, if you remember three years ago, there's a Copenhagen negotiation, right? Talk about the, every country have carbon intensity goal. Mm -hmm. So about a year earlier, we did some research um, with researchers around the globe and locally in China government, try to look at how, how technology can be effective, efficiently harnessed uh, to increase not only productivities, mm -hmm. right, GDP, um, but also to increase um, and to reduce the, 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 the carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. And we found out that, um, interestingly, um, because in China, I'm not sure about Thailand, a lot of power plants coal fire. They cause a lot of emissions, right? Mm -hmm. You probably heard a lot of the smog everywhere in China now. Mm -hmm. um, what they found out that really a lot of it is being generated by inefficiency in the manufacturing sectors. Mm -hmm. So if the manufacturing sectors um, uh, can be more efficient, leverage smart technologies uh, to manage uh, the manufacturing output, uh, um, it will in in increase uh, the, uh, the, 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 the productivity and the reduce the power consumption and, and energy efficiency tremendously. So we did a report with a lot of research with government. We found out that if government adopt that kind of approach across different industry, you know, a lot of industry in government is regulated by the government, right? Uh, we can contribute to overall China's carbon intensity reduction by 14%, which is very significant with policy implications. Mm -hmm. So instead of we do a lot of projects, uh, at the grassroots level, we look at the policy level, mm -hmm. saying government have policy and to, 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 um, to up to assert that. Mm -hmm. Another thing is we look at is really, given all the social touch points with social entrepreneur, NGOs, uh, we realize that um, there are silo, there's a silo between the, the social sector, those social entrepreneur nonprofit sector, mm -hmm. and the technology sector. They're not talking to each other mm -hmm. because they don't understand each other. They don't understand each other's language. So what we're trying to do the last two years is really uh, in a big way moving forward is really how to bring these two sectors actor together and try to understand each other's needs. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the, uh, the future of the business, the future of the business is no longer focused on historical traditional needs like entertainment, consumer, productivity, enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the needs, uh, demographic change is aging, it's a health care, mm -hmm. right, it's education, all those new issues, new way of delivering these services, mm -hmm. that represent business opportunities. Mm -hmm. So to me and to Intel, the corporate social innovation is how to harness the social understanding of social needs requirements, working with policymakers, social entrepreneurs, academia, and other business to shape the environment mm -hmm. to create demand um, for the business, let your business know how expertise, core competition. I think that's where the corporate social innovation is all about. Mm -hmm. So th that's not only uh, about this is not something nice to have. It's about survival. It's about uh, future growth, sustainability, and about the, how striving and surviving of corporations. So that's where the opportunity is.